Hi guys, today I will talk about the short film Blue Flame, which I shot with my wife Paulina on our holidays in Bulgaria, but also here in Poland when we came back. It was a no budget project without any crew, but with a lot of improvisation. Be sure to watch the film first, you can find a link here and in the description of this video. It's a simple adventure story about an archaeologist and a treasure hunter, both looking for the same magical artifact, but for different reasons. Just like in the case of our previous Hold the Shot film Escape, we didn't have a script when we started our journey, only a rough concept, which this time was inspired by Indiana Jones movies. I didn't want to make such highly improvised films anymore, but when I saw places we were going to, I couldn't resist to take that opportunity. So only with team in mind, we gathered all the clauses and props that could be useful from what we had, and we also got some inexpensive clauses and props from second-hand shops. We were in Bulgaria for 10 days, but it was primarily our holidays. So on the first couple of days, we were just exploring the area and chilling. And between that, I was making some location scouting and test shots. Then I was thinking about what scenes I could create in those locations. So I was creating story as we progressed. And after some time, I knew that in order to make a decent story, I would have to record some extra scenes when we returned to Poland. I knew that I wanted our characters to find some treasure. So we were looking at what souvenir stores could offer. So I found that interesting looking stone and an idea immediately came to my mind that it looks like a blue flame. And from that, I created the rest of the concept. I couldn't take too much gear with me on our trip. So I had to think carefully about what should I choose. Of course, I took my main camera Blackmagic 6K and ZV10 for behind the scenes and for photos from our holidays. I had to choose only two lenses for my pocket 6K so I decided that it would be better to go with wide-angle lenses to show more of those beautiful locations. So I took Sigma 18 to 35 and Tokina 14 to 20. I also didn't have time to switch lenses too often, so I still used 18 to 35 most of the time. For powering the camera, I used NPF batteries because they are smaller than V-mount and that was more practical for me. I knew that we would record in very sunny weather. So I had to take my Fieldworld LAT7 monitor to better see what we were shooting. And this monitor is very good for that, due to its brightness. For practical reasons, all shots were either on a tripod or handheld, no gimbal. I had only a place for a very small and light tripod, which was not ideal, but good enough. I also took only a small RGB light for the trip. For shots in Poland, I could use much more gear. I was testing a video transmitter from Holland which was very useful. You can check my review of it if you are interested. I also used some gear to make fog and smoke, but more on that later. In Bulgaria we had an apartment in Sunny Beach, but we shot mostly in Nesebar, which was about 20 km by bus to go there. It's an old city with a rich history. Of course there were a lot of tourists, and we tried to go there early to avoid them, but we didn't always make it for different reasons. So very often we had to wait for the opportunity to shoot. I'm doing test shots here for the first location. It was the easiest to shoot. Not many people were walking there. And after hard work, archaeologists could go to the ice cream shop. Only what is in the frame matters, so I created an illusion that it's a different place using drone shot from stock footage. I put a wig on to play professor and shot in a way so the face is not visible and I could put someone else's voice in post. Often we were just exploring the city and when I saw an ice frame, we were making shots when me or my wife were walking and searching. Not all of them ended up in the film because I didn't want to put too many shots just because they look nice. It would be too much walking without progress in the story. Here is a plan of the city which I used for the intro and as an inspiration to map. I knew before we left Poland that I would like to make some kind of map so we took tools and made it in our apartment in Bulgaria. We used coffee to make paper look old and drew some kind of ancient island with notes. This was the main temple that I wanted our curious to find the treasure, but of course it was the most popular place for tourists, so we were very limited there. We had to come back there in the morning for three days, so the biggest problem was changes in weather, which I had to deal with in post. Also, the main spot where we put our treasure was always in shadow in the morning, which is not what I would wish for, and it was the only time in the day we could somehow shoot. My cheap tripod couldn't handle the weight of the camera setup, so I had to improvise and put a small stone to make it even. 
On the last day of shooting in Nesebar, I was alone because Paulina was not feeling good, so we didn't record every shot I planned, and I had to be very creative to connect the dots in the story later. I was there very early that day, so I had a nice light. I realized that I have a lot of walking and searching shots, but not much action. So when I saw this place, I decided to make a movie trick, to make a climbing shot. I connected this one with a POV shot from another place. Earthquake shots were fun to do. We shaked the camera and tried to pretend that everything was moving. Tourists that saw us probably had a lot of fun too. I came up with an idea of an earthquake when I saw this destroyed wall. I thought that I could end up here after that. When we were looking for a destination where we want to go on our holidays, my wife suggested Bulgaria. I was not convinced at first, but when I did a research and I saw this Ravidanova castle, I was immediately on board with that. It was much farther from Sunny Beach, where we were staying, and it was not so convenient to go there by bus, but it was definitely worth going there. When we were checking the weather forecast for the next few days, we saw that there will be one cloudy day, so it made sense to go there that time and use it as a location in a different part of the world. If we were shooting on a cloudy day in Nesebar, I would have a hard time matching shots with those on sunny days. Sky was very boring, so I had to add some clouds in post. I knew that I wanted our characters to solve some riddles, so we quickly explored the area to get some ideas. I really liked this all looking doors and clock, so I thought that the time on the clock could be a key to open the doors. There was no castle interior that I could shoot, so I decided that I will find a location in Poland to connect those scenes. The castle interior scene was shot near my hometown in Ostrowenka. Here are some test shots. It was an abandoned building that was a very dirty place so we had to put in some work to make it look decent. I noticed these holes in the floor, so I came up with the idea of fire coming from there. There was a lot of trash on the floor and graffiti on the walls, so we had to clean what we could that appeared in the frames so I have less work in post-production. We painted some parts of graffiti with spray paint to a certain degree, so it's less visible in the camera. I wanted to add some fog to this scene, especially for shots with fire, but we didn't have access to electricity, so I couldn't use my fog machine. When searching for a cheap solution, I found a bee smoker, which is used in beekeeping to calm honeybees. It worked very well, but I would not recommend using it on long shots in closed interiors. It's not healthy for sure. I would use it only when you don't have other options, and for a short period of time. I put one white material in the first window and one black in the second one, to block the light more. I was setting my lights in different configurations, depending on the specific shot. I tried to make this place look bigger than it is in reality. I also added a mirror effect for some shots to make that possible. Next shooting location was this nice garden in Warsaw. We shot two scenes here, our hero's meeting and the final scene. It was already a different colder climate in Poland, so we tried to shoot in a golden hour to make it look warmer, so it could match Bulgaria scenes better. It still didn't end up to be a perfect match, but good enough. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Due to limited time with that lighting, we spent three days there. But that was not a problem, because we live in that city. It was colder and we had to be in the same outfits as in Bulgaria, but the biggest problem was mosquitoes. Even here, we had to deal with tourists on set.
Last location was in an apartment in Warsaw, so it was the easiest to shoot there. We tried to decorate the room so it looks like an archaeologist's office. I put a pinboard so I can add notes and maps there, and to hide the TV. I blocked part of the light coming from window to control it, and I put my cob light with a softbox as a key. I also attached a shower curtain on a part of the window. Even with this control the light coming from windows was changing too much, so next time I will just use stronger light behind the windows at night. As a practical light, I put small LED inside the lamp. I just attached it with the gaff tape. At the last moment I thought it would be nice to add some light on the board, so I just used my phone. I wish I could put the desk farther from the background to add more depth, but I didn't have enough space there to make a wide shot. This is how I made a shot simulating a bookshelf. You really think you'll find up there? I bet my whole career on it. <laughs> 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 now I will show you a quick breakdown of VFX. I used a lot of stock footage in this short, but despite that it was still a lot of work. I'm sorry that I will not go to resolve this time to show you the details, but there is too much mess in this project and all those VFX layers are hard on my PC. This was an easy effect. I used a small RGB LED to light the subject and I masked myself out in post. Then I just added a couple of green glow nodes in Resolve. And here is how it looks graded. In this case, I just struck the eyes of the night, brightened it up and added glow on helmet and chest armor with power windows. Fire was more complicated to make. I had to plan everything in advance to know how we had to move to avoid the fire. First of all, I had to lighten this long hole, but with only two small LEDs, I had to move it from place to place and connect everything together in post. Next, in post-production I had to add a lot of layers of fire in a row. Mask them so they appear from the hole, and then I added a couple of nodes with glow. This is full before and after. One LED was set to fire effect, so it looks more realistic with flickering. In some shots, I was also using a smoker close to the frame, when I planned the fire to burst out. Here I firstly added some shine effect to the stone and brightened the area around the stone with power windows. I also added light beams to make it more interesting and to lead the eyes to the stone. In this close up I had to add a lot of power windows to make the stone pop out more from the background. I made the magic barrier by making a mask with some color changes and two animated effects, waviness and light rays. Finally I added a stock effect for hitting the magic barrier. Here are other effects from the scene before and after. This shot was done with the same simple technique as the first one with a small LED. I just swapped the light for the stone and masked out in post-production. Then I added animated glow, lightened up our faces and graded with more glow and vignette. I will also show you the color grading process as a quick overview, but if you want some details about something, then just ask me in the comments. I already planned a first color grading tutorial that many of you waited for, so stay tuned for that. Most of the scenes in this film were supposed to be in a hot climate, so the grade was mainly in warm colors. One important thing that I planned before shooting was two outfits for the main character rows. One was green, to contrast with brown colors, like sand and bricks, Second one in the castle scene was brown, because there were a lot of green and blue colors. Thanks to that, the character was contrasting the background much more. I didn't use any filtration on the lens, but I added some character in post-production, mainly with the Dehancer plugin. I used Bloom, Haliation and Film Grain. If you are interested in this plugin, you can get it with my promo code. Link in the description. Colors are inspired by Indiana Jones movies, but of course I added my own flavor. To get a little bit closer to those movies, which were shot not only on film but also with anamorphic lenses, I distorted the image to fake anamorphic look. I also plan to make a detailed video about that. Stack shots were over sharpened by default, so I had to soften them up so they look more natural. In this castle shots I had to replace the sky, 
I use the same technique as on the music video Reborn, so if you are interested you can check Making of Reborn on my channel, where I show my process of sky replacement. I decided to make this scene darker and colder, because it was supposed to be in a different part of the world and I wanted it to be more mysterious. It also gave some contrast to the rest of the scenes in the film, which are more sunny. Even though we cleaned the walls to a certain degree, some graffiti was still visible, so I had to use heavy veneering to hide them and to just add a more dark mood. There was also a lot of work with hiding some unwanted stuff from some shots. I wanted to raise the bar this time and create some dialogues, which was very ambitious for us with very little experience in acting and not in our native language. Now I know that it was too ambitious, so our next short film, which we already shot, will be in Polish. Although I found a great voice actor on a Facebook group who was willing to dub the professor's voice, I will link his IMDb page in the description. Sometimes I came up with dialogues on locations, so we didn't even have time to practice them. I don't recommend anyone to do that much improvisation. I knew that we would have to dub those dialogues in post-production, like we did in Hug the System, because it was not possible for us to record good sound on those locations. I tried to record some shots in a way that our faces are not always visible, so in post-production I could add some dialogues which I didn't have time to create then. Sound and music was the job of my brother Mikoe, but because there was a lot of work with that, I also added many sounds to this film. Sound effects were either recorded by my brother or downloaded from the web. Only the Rose office scene uses original sounds recorded on set because I was able to set a microphone there and the sound was good enough to be used. For music, I gave my brother inspiration tracks so he know what my vision is for the mood and I knew that he would do a great job with that. Make sure to follow him on social media, links in the description. As always, I made a lot of mistakes making the short film and I was aware of things that would not be perfect even before we started shooting, especially script and our acting skills. But for me it was another project to get experience and learn new things that will help me to make more serious projects in the future. We already shot our next short film, but I didn't even start post-production so it will take some time to finish it. In the meantime I will make other videos on this channel. If you have some questions or you have some requests about what videos you want to see on this channel, then write down in the comments. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, then don't forget to like, subscribe and see you next time.